Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided that I would like to make a video explaining exactly how to set up a MySQL database into a Node.js application. So basically, if you have been watching my videos, you probably already know how to do this. However, I never actually made a video specifically teaching how to do this, so I thought it would be a good idea. And in the next video, after right after this one, I'm also going to be teaching you guys how to set up a MongoDB. So if you like working with a NoSQL database, I'm also going to be working with that. So the first thing you need is a project. I created a folder called databases and inside of here, I just wrote npm init, which is how you start a, a, a simple Node.js server. And it created a file called package.json. And now I just need to install all my packages. I'm going to install, so npm install express, which is my server. Then I'm going to install MySQL which is my database. So these are the two packages I'm going to be installing for, inst installing for now. And now it's done. By the way, if you're in a Mac, you probably already have MySQL installed in your in your operating system. But if you don't, then I would recommend installing it. You can just come here and write uh, install MySQL. And there should be thousands of tutorials. It's really, really simple. You just download uh, maybe even if you actually the way I would recommend it is installing this. So this is called brew and you will install it directly from this website and then you would go to your terminal. So terminal and simply write brew install MySQL, something like this or brew MySQL. This would just uh, install it directly into your operating system, which would make everything work. But again, if you have a Mac, then probably you already have MySQL installed. So after you get that done, there's another pro another program or another um, another thing we're going to be using, which is MySQL Workbench. And I'm going to be leaving these links in the description so you guys can see it. This is a simple way to visualize our database. So when you create a database in your system, it will be this like you won't be able to see it directly. Uh, you can use your terminal to see it directly from here, but it's also not very uh, safe to be doing that because you can easily delete stuff uh, accidentally. Like I, I've deleted a whole database accidentally before because I was working on a terminal. So I would actually recommend downloading a way to visualize your database, which is exactly what MySQL Workbench does. And I already have mine installed right here. I'm going to open it. So if I come here and write MySQL Workbench, you'll see this is what appears. There's other options too, but you can see this is what you probably will have this, this local instance right here. And if you click this and write password, which is my password. So you probably won't need any passwords cause uh, it initially doesn't have a password. You can see that over here, all of your databases appear and it's all working. So let's go back to our code and we just installed both of our packages. So express and MySQL. And we need to create our entry point to our server. So let's create a file called index.js. And over here, we can write everything we need to do to set up our server. So this video isn't actually about setting up, setting up a, an express server. So I'm just going to do it like quickly. So uh, require express, and then we create a an app. So app equals to express. Then we can just come here in the bottom and write app the listen to ports. So 3001 and we're going to be passing a function, which is just going to console the log the message server running, right? This is, these are the two things we're going to do. And if I come here and write node index.js, it says server running. And if we go here and write local host 3001, you can see that the server is working. This just means that we haven't set up a route for this page right now, but this isn't anything important. So what we're going to do next is actually set up and connect our database in our uh, index.js file. So we need to call for the MySQL uh, uh, variable. So const MySQL equals require MySQL. And the MySQL variable will allow us to basically create another variable, which is going to represent our database. So const db, which is database equals to MySQL dot create connection. And inside of here, we need to pass an object. And this object is basically the connection uh, properties. So whenever you create a database, for example, I'm going to create a database right here. So this is what we're going to do. So create schema, I'm going to call it uh, uh, 
fake let me actually write it like this fake database this is the name right and I press apply apply it executed the SQL statements and you can see on the left there's a fake database over here so I created my database and since I'm in the local host you can see this isn't anything you guys can access for example I can simply put over here user root and this should probably be the same for you then host uh, local host because we are in our local host then password well the password there's two probabilities it always depends I don't know why they, they do it like this but whenever one doesn't work I try another one so in my case I'm gonna put password but you can also just leave it blank because sometimes it works like that so password and the name of the database so database in our case we called it uh, fake database and it should know what you're trying to do. So we just made a connection with our database. And what we want to do is try to insert stuff into our database, but we need to have a table first. So let me come here to my MySQL workbench. And if I come to tables, I can write, I can click on create table and give it a name. So I want this to store um, my, uh, I don't know, uh, let me see, uh, countries. So I just want to start, start information about countries, right? So the first column in a in a data in a table usually is just an ID. So I'm just going to write ID. It's going to be an integer. It's going to be primary key. This is what this means, meaning that it is the initial key. And it, this be, means that it is not no. So we're going to let that too. This is unique. We don't need to do that because we already know it's going to be unique. And all of these are not as useful. Like this is unassigned, which means that um, you can basically just not assign it. But the only thing we need to care right here is uh, auto increment, which means that whenever we add an element to our database, to our table, uh, it's going to increase the ID by one. So this is important. And over here, we can just add as many columns as we want. So let's write country name. It's going to be a variable character. This is the data type. You can choose whatever data type you want. There's like a bunch of them, but we're going to choose this one and it shouldn't be null. So let's do this. And let's also add population. It doesn't really matter. I don't I don't know the population for the countries I'm going to put, but that doesn't really matter. I'm going to make it an integer, right? And also it shouldn't be null. And if we click apply, it will generate the SQL statement and you can click apply again and it will execute it. Meaning that now we just created a table. You can see that now the table countries appear here and we can right click on it and click on select rows that it will display everything already stored in our database. Currently there's nothing, but we're just gonna add everything right now. So if we come here and we set up a simple route, so whenever app gets the slash insert into database, this is the route we're gonna create. Then we want to require response and we wanna pass the lambda function. And basically this means that whenever we try to reach this route in our, uh, like whenever we do this insert, we're going to be running everything inside of here. And what we're exactly going to be running is the SQL statement itself. So db dot query. And on a db dot query, there's three things you can pass, right? There's the statement, so the SQL statement, uh, variables you want to insert in that statement. So whatever, I'm just going to put 332. Then over here, you can just pass a function, which takes an error and a result. And this is standard. Basically, you put the statement here and you basically for every variable you want to insert inside of here, you put a question mark instead of the value itself. Over here, you create an array where you insert all of the variables in order from which check mark a question mark appears first. And over here, you just make up a, a function which can have an error if there's an error that it, that occurs in the query and the result, which is the result of that query. If you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm going to explain it right now. So basically in this one, we just want to insert data into our database. So insert into uh, countries and we want to insert the, into the columns um, country name, which is the name of the column that we created and population. So we want to insert into two columns, right? So we got to insert the values and instead of passing directly here, for example, um, actually, let's let's just insert it directly from here right now. So country name, my country, Brazil. 
uh, let me see. Um, let's let's put a, another for, because for example we already have a we're already using a, what do I mean like a quote so the single quotes I, I wanna I need to put the values as some type of quote so we're, I'm gonna use the double quotes for the values so instead of here let me put Brazil and question and comma and over here the population so uh, two hundred thousand I don't know. Um, so this should work and let's not pass any variables for now and let's pass the results. So let's question to see if any error occurs. So if, if it occurs, we just want to console log the error. And if not, we just want to see the result. So res.send the result. And let's save this and run our server again because we're not using node one. So we need to node index.js again. And if we come here and let's open our database, our database is completely empty, as you can see. If we refresh this and we go to slash insert, we should see our statement. As you can see, it, it, it shows the result from that statement and we can go to our database, come right here, refresh it, and now the information appears in our database. However, I'm gonna be showing you guys what how to insert variables instead of directly inserting the data inside of the statement. For example, instead of just writing Brazil, I could come here and just write a question mark and over here write a question mark as well. And right next to this comma, I can pass an array and then put a comma again. So instead of this array, there will be the order of the variables we want to insert right here. So for example, if I'm trying to get a variable from the front end, uh, I've made videos, a lot of videos teaching you guys how to do this. But let's imagine we just got a variable called uh, country name and it's equal to uh, Bulgaria. I don't know why I thought that, about this country, but yeah. And we have a, a, a variable called population that is equal to uh, 69 million. So uh, let me make it less. Okay, so these are the two variables. I just need to simply put those variables right here in order from which question mark appears first. So country name appears first, I can put country name, and then put population. And now if I save this and run my server again, you can see that whenever I refresh this, it would say the same thing because we just inserted that value into our database. Interesting, right? So let's make a final uh, SQL, like a, a final demonstration of how this SQL, MySQL statements would work. Let's create another route. And in this route, we're just going to want to show our data in the front end. So let's just call this uh, select slash select. I don't know. So it's going to be an app.get and and actually this should have been a, an app.post, right? Yeah, I don't know why I made it an app.get, but you can just change that to post and it will work as well. So an app.get, we want to re remove this. This is just a way so that we're going to select every single element in your database and we want to display it in our screen. So instead of insert into countries, we're going to make a simple select statement. So select all from uh, countries, which is the name of our table. And we just want that. This is simply what we want to do. We want to select everything. And we can erase this because we have no variables we're trying to insert into our database. And this is this should be good. We're just console logging if there's any errors and we are responding to see the result. So let's save this and run again. And when we go to the slash select, so slash select, you can see that now it displays every element in our database. It displays the country name Brazil, and it displays the ID, the, the other element with a country name Bulgaria. So this is a simple way of implementing MySQL into a Node.js server with Express. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So it, it was really simple. I'm going to make one right next to this one talking about how to set up MongoDB. So if you're interested in that, please check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please like it and comment down below if you guys want to see anything else and subscribe if you're liking my channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.